Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 generals of Western history. Number 10. Attila the Hun Leader of the Hunnish Empire that stretched back from the borders of modern-day France to the steppes of Russia, this thorn in the side of both the Roman and Byzantine empires assembled a massive force of all the tribes and nations traditionally viewed as provincial savages – Huns, Goths, Vandals, and many more – and nearly conquered mainland Europe. In the template of other barbarian conquerors to come after him like Genghis Khan, he showed the lie of assumed Western superiority, and whenever your enemies name you the scourge of God, you can assume you've proved yourself a respected threat. Number 9. Frederick the Great Frederick II of Prussia was a student of modern warfare and later its guiding voice in the late 18th century. He modernized the army of his disjointed pseudo-German kingdom and fought continuous wars against Austria, the dominating power of the Holy Roman Empire at the time. Known for both his books and treatises on warfare as well as leading troops into battle personally, he had six horses shot from under him. Frederick was a force to be reckoned with. Number 8. George S. Patton The most controversial figure of the Allied forces in World War II, Patton himself may have believed himself to be reincarnated from ancient warriors carrying their bravery and experience into battle. A promising early career helping Pershing hunt Pancho Villa jump-started Patton into the Armored Corps, where he became a mentor to Eisenhower, later promoted over his head. In World War II, he gladly used the Germans' blitzkrieg against them, using the maneuverability of American armored units to outmaneuver German lines and gaining large amounts of ground over short periods of time. His infamous incidents, including troops under his command executing more than one massacre and Patton's slapping of a supposedly cowardly soldier in a field hospital, contributed to his decline, but more than anyone else, he led the Allies to victory in Europe. Number 7. Joan of Arc the Maid of Orléans is the only commander on this list to have had to share command in even her finest moments of victory, but as she is also the only woman, one feels an exception is in order. A French peasant girl who claimed visions from God, she traveled to Charles II, the French king, losing the war to the English. Though she was hampered by skepticism at first, Joan influenced several important French victories, leading charges personally and inspiring French troops to renewed fervor. Tried and executed by an English court for witchcraft, she was later exonerated, beautified, and made the patron saint of France. Number 6. Julius Caesar The famed consul of Rome was perhaps the ablest of the late republic's military leaders, vying with his co-consul Pompey for glory in subjugating territory to Rome's expansionist will. His campaign against the Gauls is still required reading in many military academies, and his defeat of Pompey nearly granted him the kingship of firmly republican Rome. The political and personal treachery that ended his life and provided the opportunity for his nephew, Octavian, to become emperor is legendary, but Caesar's successes were more reliant on the loyalty and victory of his armies than political maneuvering. Notable contemporaries include Pompey the Great, an adversary, and Mark Antony, his protege. Number 5. George Washington Washington was the pivotal and probably the most successful leader of the American revolutionary forces vying for independence from the British Empire. Though ably assisted by several subordinates, including Benedict Arnold, whose military acumen has been overshadowed by his famous betrayal, Washington proved the uniting force of the Continental Army, leading it to victory at Trenton and Yorktown, and holding the piecemeal forces together in the hard winter at Valley Forge. Being elected president twice without serious opposition seemed the least Americans could do for their war leader. Number 4. Robert E. Lee Lee, perhaps the most successful commander in history against numerically and materially superior forces, was the gentle genius in charge of the Army of Northern Virginia and most Confederate forces during the Civil War. He developed a reputation of near omniscience among both enemies and allies and soundly thrashed Union forces on numerous occasions. His losses, few as they were, were generally more devastating to his opponents than himself, and Ulysses S. Grant, the only general to successfully corner Lee, was forced to adopt a strategy of attrition rather than any attempt to outfight Lee. Number 3. Saladin Saladin, as he is known in English, was the most outstanding leader of the Crusades, hampering the fledgling Crusader states and European invasions with equal aplomb. Known for his calm and rationality, his lack of fanaticism, and his respect for his opponents, he conquered Syria, Egypt, and most of modern-day Israel steadily and without great difficulty. He was enormously respected by nearly all of his rivals and maintained an epistolary friendship with Richard the Lionheart, sending him gifts, horses, and his own physician. Number 2. Hannibal Barker the most feared opponent Rome ever faced, this Carthaginian general was raised to the task of defeating the Romans from early childhood by his father. 
Hannibal abandoned previous Carthaginian tactics of passive naval superiority and marched a force on elephants over the Italian Alps. Defeating the Romans at nearly every battle he fought, he made a Roman general, Quintus Fabius Maximus, famous merely for being able to delay Hannibal's advance without enormous loss of life. At Cannae, Hannibal's forces, cobbled together and suffering from losses, routed an enormous Roman army, killing or capturing upwards of 50,000 enemies. Eventually defeated by Scipio Africanus and deserted by his government, he remained a scourge to the Romans invoked to justify raising Carthage. Number 1. Napoleon Bonaparte Born a Corsican, Napoleon became by far the most able general of the modern age, rising from obscurity during the revolution to consul and emperor of the French Empire which spans from Madrid to Moscow and from Oslo to Cairo. Originally an artilleryman, he led campaigns that conquered the Italian states, Austria, Egypt, Prussia, Spain, the Netherlands, Swedish Pomerania, parts of the Caribbean, and large swaths of Russia. Leading brilliant campaigns using concentrated force in lightning strikes on the field, developing independent and complete army corps, a system still modeled today, installing puppet rulers, conscripting troops from each nation he subdued, and inspiring a host of marshals who were all able tacticians themselves, Napoleon revolutionized warfare. No less than four international alliances of powers were required to bring his empire to its knees, and without the simultaneous pressure of Russian winter, British naval domination, Spanish guerrillas, and Wellington's stolid and unbreakable Anglo-Spanish-Portuguese army, very likely Bonaparte would have sat astride his European conquests for years to come. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, over there on the right, a couple of other of our videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.